Okay, uh, Clark, is the next witness ready? Okay, uh, well, please bring the witness online. Okay, good morning. Uh, for the record, could you please state your name and the position you hold in your organization? Uh, hello, thank you for having me here. My name is uh, Oleksiy Makuhin. I'm head of a hybrid warfare analytical group of Ukraine Crisis Media Center. Uh, thank you. Uh, the evidence which you, you will be giving today uh, before the committee will be taken on affirmation. Uh, the clerk will now administer the at the affirmation. Okay. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, uh, I, Oleksiy Makuhin. Do solemnly. Solemnly. Sincerely. Sincerely. And truly declare and truly declare and affirm and affirm, and affirm that the evidence and affirm that the evidence which I shall give which I shall give before this committee before this committee shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth thank you please lower your hand thank you uh, could we bring the next witness online please bring the next witness Uh, good morning. Uh, for the record, could you please state your name and the position you hold in your organization? Good morning. I'm Natalia Popovich, co-founder and board member of Ukraine Crisis Media Center. Uh, the evidence which you will be giving today before the committee will be taken on affirmation. The clerk will now administer the affirmation. Please raise your right hand. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I, Natalia Popovich. Do solemnly. Do solemnly. Sincerely. Sincerely. And truly declare. And truly declare. And affirm. And affirm. That the evidence that the evidence which I shall give that I shall give before this committee before this committee shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth please lower your hand thank you uh, thank you. I would like to welcome both witnesses to the public hearing on the Select Committee on Deliberate Online Falsehoods. The focus for today's evidence gathering session is for us to put questions to you. Uh, both of you have taken a solemn obligation to answer our questions truthfully. And I will now call upon uh, Mr. Xia Kianping to, to begin the questions. Mr. Xia, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Popovich, uh, Mr. Makuhin, very good morning to all of you. Uh, from all of us, it's good afternoon in Singapore. Uh, first, thank you for your written submission. Good morning. And for joining us at our uh, select committee hearing on deliberate online falsehoods. Uh, let me start by saying uh, in your submission and, uh, and in your evidence that you will present later, uh, there will be specific references that you will make, you'll be making to, about Russia in various uh, disinformation campaigns. 
I would just like to state up front that the select committee will have no specific evidence, uh, but we will certainly listen to your views and your points. Um, first, uh, Ms. Popovich, I understand that you are the co-founder and a board member of the Ukraine Crisis Media Center, and that the organization is an, is an NGO established in March 2014 whose aim is to identify and to draw public attention to information distortions and misrepresentations against Ukraine by revealing the cases of deliberate misinformation produced and disseminated both nationally and abroad. Is that correct? This is correct. Uh, what, I will, what we will do now is I'm going to uh, run through your report, uh, make some salient, uh, draw the salient points, uh, and just to put this all on record. Let me just start uh, by going to, in fact, going straight to page two, paragraph one. I understand from your representation that in order to re-establish the Russian Empire, you stated that Russia aims to reconnect with all the Russian-speaking people not only in Russia, but also abroad. You go on to say that uh, the soft spot for information warfare is the target country's vulnerabilities contained in their languages, their cultures, religions, or history. Is that correct? That is correct. Is that and then Russian moving on to the page. Russian, which they tried. Sorry, could you say just that again? Just a clarification that this, yes, just to clarify that, especially in Ukraine, they tried to leverage the Ruski Mir or Ruski World notion, um, and uh, which was one of the premises for um, attacking Ukraine, annexing Crimea, and uh, attacking in the East. Okay, moving on to page three, uh, coming to this part on information warfare. In paragraph three, you shared that while the West sees informational operations as limited and only appropriate during times of hostilities, Russians view their information operations as, as perpetual, regardless of their state of relations with any government. In other words, Russia considers itself in an ongoing state of information warfare. In paragraph four, you shared that the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu has openly acknowledged the formation of an information army within the Russian military. And in the same vein, the current chief of the Russian general staff, General Valery Garasimov, has apparently observed that Russia now conducts its warfare by a rough four is to one ratio of non-military two military measures. Same paragraph, you state that it appears that what makes Russia's information warfare threatening is that the Russians have adapted their information operations for the age of the internet and social media. You also observe that as more and more people rely on the internet and social media as their primary sources of news and information, so have they emerged as the ideal vector of information attack. To page four, the la uh, so on the same page, the last paragraph, you said that as technology evolves, so, will, so would Russian disinformation. And this could allow the Russians to fight their war at a much cheaper cost, yet potentially more effective. Would that be a fair uh, summary? So far? Yes, everything is correct. Okay. Moving on to page four. In fact, you have uh, helpfully set out an overview of the Russian tactics for the disinformation campaigns. Again, if I could just summarize it. First, they identify and exploit the relevant fault lines in that society, whether in the sphere of race or religion. Next, they plan their distribution net outlets to make sure their disinformation reaches the relevant audience. 
Third, they spread overarching narratives that explain fundamental reasons of the conflict, usually by claiming to uphold liberal democratic ideals. For example, and I quote, Russia is attacked by the West because it fights for multipolar world order. They also spread local narratives to demoralize the target country's population. These narratives are usually emotional and supported by images and pictures, for which you showed quite a few in your submission. They make use of local actors, you call them, or it's termed useful idiots, to amplify that narrative. And finally, they monitor and measure the impact and adjust their disinformation messages accordingly. So again, would this be a fair summary? Yes, everything is correct. And in the last para of that page, you shared the interactions with news generated by false news outlets, in fact matched or exceeded news produced by professional news outlet. And as you observe in that same paragraph, false news have no impact unless they fit into a powerful narrative and are disseminated to an unprepared society. Moving on to page five, paragraph four. The steps taken by Ukraine to defend its information space. And uh, in relation to these steps, you discuss that uh, Ukraine have enacted a law to impose a minimum quota, minimum quota on Ukrainian language content on TV and radio. In the same frame, Ukraine has also limited the activity of Russian social media sites and networks. And as a result, Russian-owned sites lost their dominant position. In fact, we heard the same earlier from Mr. Davidenko uh, from StopGap earlier today. Moving on to paragraph five, you said that what Ukraine has learned through a real war is that it is important to continuously strengthen its social cohesion. By social cohesion, I take it that it includes strengthening community bonds amongst the people and building their, building their resilience, and which you also referred to in paragraph two of the same page. Would that be correct? Yes, that is correct. To build the resistance, yes. Thank you. Um, let me move on to page seven where you have provided an example of how Ukraine has successfully countered one of Russian disinformation campaigns. You cited an incident in early 2015 where Russia had spread various disinformation to target and to demoralize the Ukrainian army. I understand from your representation that the narratives spread were, and I quote, West doesn't care about you, or that you can always escape from the army going to Russia. You also mentioned that as a complement to its disinformation operations, Russia also makes use of other non-military measures, such as sending threatening personal messages to Ukrainian soldiers and conducting cyber operations to steal their personal data. And in the second last paragraph of that same page, you describe the steps taken by Ukraine to counter the disinformation campaign. Amongst others, I understand from your representation that the Ukrainian authority, which that, that is the military, they stepped in and held regular information sessions with the media. Would that be right? That is correct, on a daily basis. That on is a correct. daily basis. Let me move on to your last few pages where you talk about, to page 16, where it comes to recommendations. So based on your experience countering this information, you have suggested that it is important to, firstly, formulate or update the definition of disinformation. Second, to change national legislation accordingly to deal with disinformation. And thirdly, not allow sites that spread disinformation to enjoy the treatment of a free media. 
On this treatment of a free media, can you explain what you mean by this? We mean that there are a number of countries, including Ukraine, where, for example, Russia today would be considered a free media. Uh, now, four years after the aggression started, based on everything that we know, we, for example, would treat Russia today as an extension of the, uh, Russia's information operations and basically military operations. So we don't feel that they should enjoy the rights of the free media in countries where they broadcast. And the same applies to Sputnik, the same applies to Rapti, because, again, in the past couple of years, there would be international or Ukrainian media that would still be using the footage provided by Rapti only because it's provided for free for them, and that would, they would rely on it as, as on a true footage, uh, which should not be the case, uh, again, based on everything that we know. So this concerns um, these, um, these Russian-based uh, media. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, your second last paragraph, you have also cautioned that the election period is usually the most vulnerable period to information attacks and the attention needs to be given to the country's information space. If I can quote you, you said, elections should be considered a part of the national critical infrastructure as they are a cornerstone of sovereignty, unquote. And in your last paragraph, you, I note from your representation that states need to adopt a multi-pronged approach. Firstly, need to build resilience on a national level by improving critical thinking and media literacy. Need to build systems which enable faster responses to information attacks. And thirdly, need to improve strategic communications. Um, so that is the end of your, your uh, recommendations. Would that be correct? These are your, rec your yes, recommendations. Yes, um, that is correct. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Thank you, thank you. Chairman, that's all thank I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, I would like to thank both of you for taking time to participate and contribute to the Select Committee process, and we thank you also for your submission. Um, we will be sending you a transcript of today's proceedings. Please go through it. And if there are any amendments, please make the changes and send the transcripts back to us. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.